Hello everyone and welcome to the Palette Knife Italian Staircase Tutorial. Here's what I'm using. It's a 9 by 12 canvas board, uh, very flexible, and I take a sheet of that and with my green painter's tape, I create a bit of a border. That way when we're finished, we have a nice white crisp border around the painting. Here's what we're going to attempt to paint today. Um, you don't have to worry about drawing this. I do have a drawing available. So I lay my carbon paper down on top of my canvas and I tape it. Then I lay the sketch on top of the carbon paper and with a ruler and pen, I draw in the lines. This is an easy way to get the proper perspective without having to worry about not having any drawing skills. The paint we're going to use today is cadmium red, sap green, buff, titanium white, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and raw sienna, and maybe a little yellow ochre. Also Mars black. Okay, so I have taped my drawing to a canvas here, and I've noticed I've missed some lines. Um, so I'll just add those in. One thing I really want to stress about the drawing for a palette knife painting, a lot of these lines are going to get covered up. So don't spend an enormous amount of time getting every single detail for the drawing. What is really important is angles. So when you're doing a staircase, you want the angles of the stairs to be correct and the angle of the building to be correct for it to look proper. So, I mean, as you can see, like the bushes, I just did some squiggly lines. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time uh, drawing in the leaves and every branch. So you just want the angles and the perspective. That is the most difficult part of doing a building or anything that has perspective. I want to show you what tools we're going to be using to do this painting. So obviously my palette knives and I've got different sizes here. I've got a number five, a number one. My favorite one for doing brick and stone houses is this fella, a number two. He just does some really perfect linear stones. So this is my favorite. I'm also gonna be using a half inch flat brush. And again, um, a real quick and easy way to do bushes and leaves, it's with some uh, sea sponges. So we'll be using those today too. I'm gonna start with a palette of some buff burnt umber, white, and a raw sienna. You can use a yellow ochre as well. And we're going to just start with these colors and I'm first gonna start painting this brick wall. Always work from the back and come forward. So obviously this planter, this wall, um, the railing, they are all in front of this back wall. So we're gonna start with that first. So I am going to, with my favorite knife, dip into a little bit of the white, a little bit of the brown, and a little bit of the buff. And I'm just gonna start laying this in. Now, the big thing with doing stonework, always brush in the direction of the wall. Don't start doing vertical strokes and uh, you know, mash it all over the place. You want it, you want to keep it in the direction of the wall. The other thing, you don't want them all the same color. So continue just to mix it up. And you can see, like I have completely almost obliterated that planter. That's fine because we can go back and get that later. Every here and there, I'm gonna put in a little bit of that nice raw sienna color. Now, as you come down closer to the steps, I may switch my palette knife out 
just to be able to control the lines a little bit. And by the way, speaking of control, that is one thing that perfectionists will have a hard time with when it comes to palette knife painting. Because I could paint this painting five, six times, and each time it's going to look completely different. You have very little control over texture, how the colors blend together, but that's, that's the fun part of it too. If you're, you know, doing a lot of detailed drawings, going back to the palette knife every now and then um, really loosens things up again. So it's, uh, it's good to do every now and again. So notice I'm still going in the direction of our original lines. Now I'm going to move, I'm going to move to a smaller knife so that with this straight edge, I can then get right in to those stairs. Do you notice that when I talk and paint at the same time, I stop? I don't seem to be able to paint and talk. So I apologize for the pausing and the breaking. I am gonna paint right over this railing. We can always, see, I paused again. <laughs> we can always get it back. When this is dry, we can just paint over that again. So I'm going all the way down. There is a line back here that is the top of our stairs. So I'm going all the way down to that line. So you see, I can still get a fairly straight line. I'm making that a little darker because this wall will be casting a shadow down here. But you don't want it so stark. So then you see I can go back and just kind of soften that up a little bit. So that's covered up nicely. I'm going to go back and just here and there add some darker. And I'm just skimming over the top. This is barely touching. So it just catches the high the high points of the canvas. So I'm using the raw sienna, a little bit of that burnt umber, and we can go back later and add uh, some more details in. So I'm gonna start on this side, and this side is going to be in shadow. I'm not gonna do as much detail. I'm gonna darken up the colors a little bit, and maybe even for this top part, I'll use my brush but uh, I'll stop talking now and we can uh, fast forward through this a little bit and um, you can watch what I'm gonna do. up a little bit it was just a little bit too dark but I've kept it dark down in behind here our leaves and flowers are going to be in front of this but because our light source is coming this way everything to the right of these planters everything in behind this wall is going to be a bit darker okay so I think we'll move on to our next step and we'll do this wall trying to maintain the same sort of colors. And at this point, you know, start experimenting with um, maybe you want to add more grays. So if you do get a little bit of ultramarine blue and a little bit of the buff and the white and the brown, you can start maybe experimenting a little bit on the colors and the beautiful thing is if you don't you know obviously I don't like that blue in there so I'll just mix this a little bit better and uh, the beauty with this is if you do something and you don't like it you can wait till it dries and uh, 
just paint over it. So again, I'm gonna keep in line with our perspective, right? So we're gonna follow these lines. We're gonna leave that arch. So I'll try to go around the archway in behind that bush. And you know, keep a paper towel in hand as well because if it starts getting too uh, too much one color, if you're if you start getting muddy, then you can just wipe your brush off, or sorry, your knife off, and then go back and uh, re-dip into some of the colors. I can go this way as well. In behind that plant, it's going to be very dark. So I might go in with my darker colors in here. And I'm just scraping it over to my wall line, wiping that off. This is all one color here, so I want to break some of that up. So again, very lightly, I'm just pulling my palette knife across. There we go, maybe a few little dark stones. Maybe some more brown. So you can continue with this step for as long as you want. You can go over this as many times as you want until you're happy with it. What I might do is wait until that wall is now dry and then go back in with some beautiful highlights. Okay, so continue with this. Uh, take as long as you need. And when we come back, we're going to work on this archway. So what I've done while we we're away is just put in a few little more highlights. I've brought the same color of highlights over to this side of the wall. And I have said this before, a lot of paintings have that ugly stage. So I'm sure you're looking at your painting at this point thinking, what on earth is this thing? But I promise you, it will come together. So hang in there. Um, the one thing I did forget is before we start with this archway, I want to paint this part of the pillar. And again, to create that depth and perspective, this is going to be in shadow. So I am adding black to our palette at this point and I'm going to mix a little bit of the brown a little bit of the blue ultramarine blue and some black and you don't want it super dark you still want to be able to know that this is you know part of that stone continued I've put a piece of tape so um, I could at least get a fairly crisp edge. We are going to put a very dark line when we remove that. But at this point, I'm just going to start at that line, drag this over. You may need to switch over to the small, smaller side of the palette knife. And I'm being careful around these um, steps. I'm just reloading here. A little bit of ultramarine blue is nice. It just kind of breaks that up. Once you have it fully covered, again, we don't want it all the same color. So I'll go in with some real darks here and there. And I'll go in with a lighter. I'm going to wipe off my knife. So 
So I'm going to take that off and see what that looks like. Stand back. And yeah, see, I've taken too much of the dark away. So I'm going to go back in and just bring some of that back over. It's so dry in here right now, my paper is buckling. So I am uh, having to deal with the rise and fall of this paper. Okay, so I'm happy with that. And I am going to leave that until the very end uh, where for the final details, we'll go in with one of our brushes and we'll just kind of create more of that individual stone look. My tape took off some of the paint in my stones over here. Whoops. So I'll just go back and fix some of those. Okay. Now this archway, we're going to go and we're going to use our half inch flat brush. And I'm going to dip straight into a little bit of black mixed with burnt, uh, sorry, ultramarine blue. If you use straight black out of the container or tube, it's very flat. So if you mix a bit of brown or mix a bit of blue into it, it just warms it up. And where that curved line is, I'm just going to use the edge of my brush and I'm going to sweep. And as I come to the thin part, I'm lifting up. Then I'm gonna wash that out. And again, with our brown, with our buff, with our white and with uh, our raw sienna, I'm gonna just paint where the inside of that archway. Now, most of this is gonna be covered up by our bush, but maybe you'll have some breaks between the greenery, so you'll be seeing this in behind. Now I'm just gonna go in and, cause this is stone in here too. When this is dry, we're going to create a shadow because this archway will be casting a shadow on here, but I don't wanna do it while it's wet because it will just start getting muddy looking. Again, with our half inch brush, we can start putting in the top of this brick. I'm just gonna straighten that up a bit. Now maybe go in with some darker ones here and there. And then with a very dark brown and uh, maybe the ultramarine blue, I'm actually going to create a lip at the top of this. Now, all of this is going to be developed a lot more, but for now, we're just putting the groundwork in, the impression of a ledge. I think this is dry enough now for me to go back and put a bit of a shadow in here. And then back with my palette knife, I'll create some more stone impressions. What you can't see off camera here is I'm referring to my photo and I'm referring uh, to my drawing 
just to make sure that I'm getting the angles still correct. And I'm wiping a lot of this off in between colors uh, just to prevent it from getting muddy. So I always have a paper towel handy. With my large palette knife, I'm going to use just this end, the smaller end, and develop that ledge a little bit better. Normally I would have this flat on the table, so so the door, the door we use the burnt sienna, and I am using, uh, I don't think I mentioned it in the beginning, but I am using my long rigger brush. There is a plant here in front. Uh, there is a door frame that I have painted over, but I'm just going to go and I'm going to paint the whole thing. And I'm not worried about the lines that I'm covering up. I'm going to paint the whole thing first. Now, if you can imagine, and please use the drawing uh, or the photo, and uh, I'm going to mix a little bit of burnt umber so you can imagine that there is a door jam here. So the door is recessed. So this side is going to be dark. That's not dark enough. So I might actually uh, even add a bit of ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and the burnt sienna. And for some reason, that's wet. So let's... You want this really dark because then it will look three-dimensional. So I'm going to have to wait for that to dry. Then it would be coming up here at the top. Do you see how it's starting to look like a recessed door? There is in the middle a window, so I'm going to just paint it black for now. And even it will be recessed. So with a very dark black, I'm just going to paint a thin line to the left and the top. And then maybe a gray. So maybe the window in the door is kind of reflecting the light a bit. So again, you just keep developing this one step at a time. making sure your angles and lines are in perspective. Now I'm going to mix a bit of that burnt sienna with our raw sienna to create a highlight color because if our light is coming from this way, parts of this door will be catching the sun. I'm 
I'm even going to make that lighter while that's wet and they can blend together. Who would have thought a little door like that would have so many steps? Okay, now I'm going back to this door jam and I'm really going to make that dark. Okay. I'm going to wait for all this to dry and then we can continue on. I'm going to finish off the top of this wall now. So this cement flat part, if you look at your photo, uh, this would be um, the concrete part. It will be where our pot will be sitting. So again, just with the half inch flat brush, I've just taken whatever colors on my palette at the moment. This is like a dark gray. I might just lighten that up a little bit. And I'm just going over the uh, flat parts. I'll go back to a dark brown and mix it with a bit of the blue just to create that edge. So I've really got my brush chiseled. Now if you want to lay your painting flat on a table, you can use the palette knife for this as well. But because I'm upright here, I won't be able to get the right angle. So I'm just going to use the brush. And then for that little section over here, this is going to be completely in shadow. So I'm just going to do that almost a black. Such a small detail, but it really does make a difference. And I'm just going to even lighten this up a little bit more because it's just blending too much in with the back wall. There we go. Okay, now for the terracotta pots, we're going to paint those first before we do our greenery. And uh, you can use whatever knife you are comfortable using. And again, I'm just going to dip right into the pure burnt sienna. And I'm going to use the small part of my knife. And I'm just going to go straight down. Would help if I had some paint on the knife. Um, I'm going to add one over here. So I'm going to go from my ledge and I'll just go straight up. Then there's the one over here. Now I'm not going to bother drawing in my lines again because a lot of this is just going to be covered up with the greenery. So I'm just going to kind of just guess where this starts and where it ends. What I do want though is to keep that linear perspective. So I don't want to have my box going this way or straight. It's got to follow the line of the wall. Now, of course, everything has a shadow side. So with my burnt umber, I'm going to make a dark side to this. So I've got it on the wrong side of my knife. And 
there we go. This one I'm going to go this way. One of our final details is going to be adding a highlight color, but for now, this is all we need to do. Don't forget this guy down here at the bottom. So I'm just going to go straight up for him. And with the darker side, just come across where it would be hitting the step. Okay, I think it's time to head for these stairs and this is going to be a combination of palette knife and brush but we're going to start with the brush first take a break take a breath and we'll come back and get started on that i want to show you on this finished painting what we're going to be doing here because i'm going to get started but then i'm going to stop talking and just paint and you can follow along biggest thing we need to have on the steps is the front riser and the flat part. This will be lighter than the top because this is the side that is facing our light source. This bush will be casting a shadow. This wall will be casting a shadow. So this will be in shadow because it's behind the stairs. So the whole thing with painting is shadow versus highlight. It's what gives it perspective. It's what gives it depth. If we were to paint these stairs all the same color, the painting would be completely flat. So I am going to do a gray sort of color on the front, more of a brown on the top. Um, I'm really just sticking to the four colors that I've been using, the buff, the white, the brown, and the burnt sienna. And uh, this will probably take half an hour or so, so I am going to speed up the video and you can pause it and watch it as many times as you need.
have a confession to make. I had to take my canvas and lay it flat because I could not get these angles uh, the right way having this standing up. So for me, uh, it is easier to have it lying down than trying to paint uh, a palette painting vertical. Anyways, I want to point a few things out that I did. To get this shadow here, I put this darker so that I could see the stairs better. So I made a very watery brown umber ultramarine blue. And with the brush, I mean, it, it's very watery, so you can see through it. I just brushed over that area. I also did underneath the flower pot here and underneath our pot here because this will be resting and creating a shadow. The stairs, you may have to do them three, four, five times. I like to get everything in with the brush first to block in the shapes. Then I go and scrape a little with the palette knife. But if I start losing my lines, I go back in with the brush to get them back again. The biggest piece of advice I can give you with the stairs is you have to keep these lines straight. Now they don't have to be perfectly straight because it isn't uh, a super realistic painting. This is, this is fairly abstract in our technique, but you can see how these stairs are all pointing to a vanishing point over here. So if you had one stair angled this way, the stair above it angled down, you could very quickly see how your painting just won't make sense anymore. So these lines all have to be going the same way. These lines all have to be going the same way. And when you do your brush strokes, so the risers are up and down, that's how I put the paint on. This area is flat, so I paint it this way. So I'm not painting haphazardly different directions. I stay it's like when you sand wood, you go with the grain of the wood. So it's the same when I'm painting. I paint in the direction that the object is facing. So there's a little bit of road down here left. It's going to be very much in shadow because it's behind everything. So I'm using a bit of black, a bit of blue, and a bit of burnt umber. And I'm just quickly going to... Put that in, and with my knife, I'll go and, at this point, I'm just really grabbing any paint that I have left in my palette, and I'll just pull some of that across. A lot of this is just going to be on the tape, but uh, when we pull the tape off, you will see. A bit of the road there. And again, here's a step that should have taken like two seconds. There we go. Okay, so let's do something fun. We're going to go to our greenery. So we need to get sap green. And if you can find a clean place on your palette, that would be great. And I'm going to get my bigger sponge and I'm going to, here you can see how crazy my palette is now. I'm going to dip a little bit into the black, a little bit into the green, and I'm going to make a very, very dark, almost black green. Thing when working with sponge, it can get very muddy very quick. So you may have to wash it out a few times. Uh, the other thing is the more you dab, the more solid the color. 
So where you want maybe some of this stone wall, just dab once. As you get to the base, you want it more solid. I'm not worried about those white parts coming through because we've got lots of highlight color. But as I get closer out, I don't want to be dabbing too much. Okay, so I'm just mixing a little bit more and I'm going to go down to this plant here. Again, at the base, it's going to be very solid. And as I come up, I won't be dabbing quite so much. We've got, I'm just squeezing it a little smaller. We got one up here. We've got this guy. Oh, we never painted his terracotta pot. That's okay. We can go back to it. We've got one in front of the door here. And one up here. Looks a little crazy right now, but it will get better. So now I'm just going to dip directly into my green. I haven't washed this out yet, but this will be like a middle color. I always have the dark, then you have a medium, and then you have a highlight. I'm just going to put this here and there. All right, at this point, I'm going to wash the sponge out and come back with the highlight. For the highlight color, I have mixed my sap green with titanium white. Now, remember, our sun is coming from the left. So the left side of my greenery is going to be brighter. The top will be brighter, but down here at the bottom and to the right, I'm going to try to leave that dark. Now, in Italy, and I'm assuming in France, they have beautiful jasmine, and the smell of it is everywhere. So what I thought we could do is make the two larger bushes jasmine bushes, and our top planters can be uh, begonias, petunias, or a made up flower, anything you like, but we'll put some red there. Right now, I've just washed out my sponge again, and I'm dipping straight into the white this time. This is why I wasn't really worried about these white spots, because I'm gonna add more. Again, don't get crazy with this. Um, you don't want it looking like a bunch of dots, but it's, it's just such an easy, simple way to add flowers. We're not gonna do the red ones yet because we're gonna do those with um, a palette knife. I do wanna go back in with my small brush and put in this pot before I lose it entirely. So this, these are one of the ones that you know hang off the wall. So I'll paint the whole thing, the burnt sienna, and then I'll go in with my burnt umber and a little ultramarine blue. Everything has a shadow side. We can define that one a bit more now. Then with the raw sienna and a bit of white, we can actually do a little bit of a highlight. I'm gonna go back to this door 
now that it's completely dry. And do a little nicer highlight just where I think the sun might be hitting the right side of that. I'll go in with my pure. I'm just going to bring this down a bit because it looks like it's floating on top of my bush or plant. Okay, can you see it starting to come together now? We still have to do the railing, which I've completely lost now. Uh, what you can do is if you're afraid to do it freehand, wait till it's completely dry, put your carbon back on, try to match up where you are and redraw it. But let's do that bottom ground area there. And again, you know, to the uh, right of this plant, there's going to be a pretty dark shadow. But the rest of it's going to be fairly light. So I'm going to lighten that up quite a bit. It's funny, in my other painting, I don't even have this area. So I don't know how it uh, came to be on this painting. But that's okay, who's going to know? I'm going to darken up that shadow a little bit more. So I would definitely say this is not a beginner painting, but I've seen how well you guys are painting, so I'm sure you'll be able to do this. might take you a little longer than some of the other tutorials, but that's okay too. Now you see, I've lost that line. It's just not at the same angle, so I can go back and correct that a bit. And just soften that up a little. And with the real dark, I'll put in the shadow card. Oops. Okay, this still isn't dark enough for me. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to mix another dark wash, watered down, little bit of the blue, little bit of the brown, little bit of the black. I'm gonna make it very watery. And I'll just wash some of this out just to get it a little darker because it definitely is in shadow. All right, I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm going to draw my railing back in and we'll finish up the final details. We are almost done. I did have to lay my painting flat again. Um, I just put in some highlights with the knife and I had to get the right angle to be able to do that. Um, I put in a very dark wash underneath this plant because it will be in shadow. I still haven't done my railing, but I thought while it's drying, um, I'm just gonna go in with my red and with one of these long knives, I'm just gonna put a few dabs of whatever kind of red flower you want this to be. Again, no right or wrong. 
how many you put in. Make sure you get some though. They don't all just sit on the top. Get some that maybe hang over the plant. Don't make them all the same size. Don't put them all in a line. Wow, doesn't that make it pop? Okay, now I really am waiting for this to dry so I can redo the railing. There are several ways you can do the railing. You can use your long rigger brush to get these straight lines. You can get a very thin bead of black and go down with your knife, or you can use acrylic permanent black marker and a ruler. Um, I'm probably going to do a little bit of all three. I'll probably draw it in with my acrylic marker first. I'll do a highlight side with my palette knife. And if I get it too thick, I will thin it with my brush. Uh, I will have to do this line flat, so I'll show you the finished product in a few minutes. So I did want to show you this a little. I've used my liner brush and I've drawn the black lines, but the top of the railing will be lighter. So I've made a very watery gray and I'll dab the excess off on a paper towel. Now underneath here won't have any highlight, but of course the front of our post will. And let's see if I can do this straight. So I'm not gonna go all the way up with the highlight. Even in between these bars, there'll be a bit of a um, highlight color. You know, it's these final details that really make a painting. Now, what's going to be underneath that? Well, that's going to have a shadow. So I'm just going to mix a little bit of blue and brown, a little bit of the black. I'm not going to make it too thick. I'll water it down a little. I probably put my railing way too far out here. Make that a little straighter. I'm actually going to um, even blue that up a little bit more. It's a little too brown, so I want to um, just make it a little bit. Okay, so we're coming down to the end. This is where you do a squint test. Squint your eyes and see if something stands out. Is something too bright? Is something too dark? Um, I still don't like this. I really wanna rework that and that should be almost black because it's gonna be in complete shadow. I wanna show you what happens when you just go in with a bit of black You see how all of a sudden that puts that planter right in front of that step. So these are the little things that I'm gonna do now. Back here, this will be completely dark back here. Behind this wall. In here. So I'm going to just work on these final details. If there's something that you think needs highlighted, now's the time to do it. So you've probably got, you know, a good 10, 
10 minutes of just these little tiny details. Um, if your wall color here is too similar to the background wall, either make this lighter or this darker. I'm going to go in with a little black line. Maybe go a black line underneath the ledge. Maybe on this side just a little. You can soften it with your finger. Maybe come back here and you just do a couple of little soft lines to show where that ledge is. Yeah. So continue working on that and we'll do the big reveal at the end. So here's the finished painting and uh, I am, I'm very happy with it, even though it is a little different than the one we were working from, but that's okay. So I just wanted to show you a few things. I did develop these real dark areas here and up around the planters. I spent a lot of time here, but I found out when I revealed my border that um, a lot of this actually didn't show up. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It is a bit of a challenge, but uh, I have every confidence in your abilities. I've seen how great you guys are painting. So it's good every once in a while to stretch out of our comfort zone and try something new and uh, you may want to try this a few times and uh, like everything else it's just practice but I would love to see your finished paintings thanks again everyone and have a fantastic weekend and happy painting